to get, let me, I wanted to give a shameless plug. I keep hearing you guys mention about events that you want to do. Yes. Um, and need, the need for events. Well, that is one of my strong suits. So one of the projects that I will work on and bring to this organization is ongoing events. I get a lot of my emails, not just black, not just white, not Asian, everybody for writers. Okay? So I just wanted to let you guys know they will be coming in as long as I'm here and a part of you guys. And if I'm not, I'll be more than happy to share those with you. Okay? I promise. I get a lot. I wanted to read the preface to my book. The reason why I decided to do it was because one of my platforms is dealing with domestic violence and abuse on women, etc. Now, some of you may say we hear that all the time, but until I hear that it's completely wiped out and no one else is getting killed because of it or hurt or injured, I still have to talk about it. Okay? Thank you. The preface. This is actually my story. So don't get sad. I hope you guys still, you know, all want to go home and get down on your back. Maybe it was because I was sexually abused from at least the age of 14 and down through my younger years. The earliest I remember is five. By not one, but five different people who were supposed to be looked at as faint. It is a secret that would be taken to my grave if I haven't already told it. Or maybe because I felt unloved and wanted attention. Maybe because I felt... I'm sorry, maybe because I didn't feel good about myself because I was told that I looked like a duck and called butterball when I hit puberty and started developing breasts, hips, and a big butt. Maybe it was because I watched my grandfather get so drunk that he would fall down the steps. Thank God he got delivered from alcohol, a demon that played all sides of my family. Yes, a generational curse. Or maybe because I had created jealousy of my little brother because he always got the new and style clothes. And I always had to share my clothes with my mother until I was old enough to buy my own. Maybe it was because I was always being compared to other cousins and had to share barrettes and heritage. Maybe it was because maybe it was just because I had to take a bath in the same bath water that my mother did right after she got out the tub. Or maybe it was because I felt that my mother hated the fact that I was born, ruined her life, and caused her to miss out on so much of her own life. Maybe it was because I always felt like I was just taking up space in the world, since I always felt like a second-class citizen squatting. Or, maybe because I cried myself to sleep and contemplated suicide only for my brother to talk me out of OD and on pills and split my wrist. Maybe it was just because my father never came around and didn't want me. And my stepfather physically abused my mother, eventually giving me my first black eye and my first nose sleep. Or just maybe because the guy who I gave my virginity to, not really even knowing I was a virgin or how to be one because of the sexual abuse, made me so embarrassed because he said I was tight and not in a good place. Whatever it is, when I jumped into getting married, I saw it as a way of escape. Yet I didn't realize how serious of a situation I was getting into. I had gotten married when I shouldn't have, too soon, and not in God's biblical order for my life. Although, if I hadn't, I might not have written this book, gained a real testimony, or learned my purpose in life. From the verbal, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical abuse, I became even more damaged. I became an even more damaged woman. The devil had already left his side to my life, and I suppressed issues. Issues that would mess up just about every romantic relationship that I would have, not now. <laughs> and it caused me to attract the wrong type of man to me, and settle for them and their issues. I had become a woman who became afraid to be alone because of the de- because of the dependency developed by my ex, you fill in the blank, husband, lover, boyfriend, thought to be husband, you can decide what you want to call him. It scared me off and sorry, it scared off guys no matter how good or bad for me they were. Tyler Perry said it back. Some people are in your life first season and some for a lifetime. I sometimes wonder how many potential lifetimes I have pushed away and conversely how many seasons I kept around way too long. I had people at churches where I attended ignore situations at hand, and even my family thought I was the crazy one in my marriage. The more I cried out, the more the devil had pulled the covers over their eyes, everybody, even mine, and pretty much caused me to want to leave this world sooner than God had planned for me to, I guess. I once heard someone say that the devil will use someone close to you to hurt you, and that's what I always found to be true. The more I thought about it, the more I had to get my mind reconditioned. I had to work harder than most not to totally lose my mind. 
Thank be to God who had my life's purpose in his hands and gave me time to realize him and his purpose for me. I now see that I had to go through an abusive marriage and the situations that occurred from it because of all the people God has sent my way since this has happened. I was like the woman in the Bible who had the issue of blood and had to press her way through the crowd of people to see Jesus. My blood issue was life, and my crowd was life circumstances. Yet, Jesus was there along, I'm sorry, Jesus was there all along and welcomed me into his loving arms time and time again. Wow. Over a four and a half year time span, I had been homeless, evicted from almost every residence I had called home, three different places, used for the little bit of money that I had or did come across, hungry, smoking cigarettes and black, weed and drinking, I don't do any of this today, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, felt lonely and like I didn't fit in, I contemplated suicide, I was depressed, felt worthless, disrespected, angry, violent, desperate, called vulnerable and gullible. I experienced three house raids within six months, 2005, still not totally sure why, I had to, I wasn't dealing with drugs or anything like that, I promise, that's why I said I was going to I had to deal with shifty types of landlords, lost two cars, been in debt, been to visit people in and out of prison, cried off and on, I felt like I was on a whirlwind. I came within feet of a dead body, just off the machines in the hospital, not in a casket, and I lived in a house with not one, but two cremated bodies in the box. I attracted men who really didn't care about me, and often lied saying that they loved and cared about me, and to top it all off, I was unattached from the church, so I church hopped and could, I could say so much more, but I did all this just to become a completely whole woman. One other part. You don't have to clap yet. I promise. Um, just a little bit of the story to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of what was actually going on for you guys. I don't think I was exaggerating when I said I went to hell, hot water, and everything else. The, chap- the part of the chapter is called Life Insurance. What really happened was that these saved the entire murder. While he was entertaining the life insurance salesman regarding the purchase of a life insurance policy for me, the male dog began to whimper for loudly. So loudly that the insurance salesman told him to go and check on the dog. And he did. He played the role of an individual concerned with the well-being of his distraught dog. Then the salesman told B that he should take the dog to the emergency room of a veterinarian office. B now had a witness to his emotional distress of having to deal with a dying dog and someone to solidify his story. Thank you. Ooh.